So the Jaxars client API has this interesting concept called invocations. Uh, the idea behind invocations is you can prepare a request and you can put in all the things you need that request to do, right? You need to know where the target is, you need to know what the request uh, format is, what the body of the request is, whether it's a you know, get method or a post method, all that stuff. So the idea is to create a request object which contains all the information about the request. It's, it's ready to go. The only thing is it's not made that request yet. So you hold on to that object and you can pass it around and have some other code just issue the request without knowing what that request is, without having to know the details of that request. So that's invocation. You create an object called invocation, which contains all the details about a request. And then you invoke it somewhere else. So let's see how that happens. So in order to demonstrate this invocation feature, I'm gonna create a separate class. Uh, I'm not gonna edit this class. I'm gonna create a new Java class and I'm gonna call this invocation demo. I'll choose a main method. I'll click finish. All right, so the scenario that I'm gonna run is, let's say I wanna create a request to get all messages by ear. So we've designed this REST API endpoint with this API, right? So there is a slash messages and there's a query parameter, year equals, and you pass in the year and it's gonna return all the messages by year. Now let's say I wanna make this call in this class, but I wanna offset the responsibility of creating this request to another method, okay? Now let's say I create this method called prepare request for messages by year. And uh, this method, let's say it accepts an integer, which is the year, and it's gonna prepare this request for me, right? So that's the idea. I don't want to have the logic for preparing this request reside in the main method. I wanna offload that responsibility to another method and have that method prepare the request and give me back the fully prepared request so that I can just execute it, right? I still wanna have control over when the request gets executed, but I don't wanna have information about all the request details pollute this piece of code, which is you know the main method, okay? I wanna offload this out. So now what I can do is I can create this method here. I'm gonna say it's a public void. I'm gonna leave it as void for now and um, I'll change this later. All right, so this is the prepare method. It takes an input argument, which is int year. Now, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna create an instance of this class because main is a static method. So I'm gonna do a demo dot. Okay, so I make a call to this method and I pass in the year. And now I want the request to be prepared. Now, what I'm gonna do is copy over a couple of lines of code from the existing example, because these are things I'll have to do anyway. I'll have to create a client and I'll have to create a target. So I'm just gonna copy these things out. And um, I'll remove the last line. I don't need the messages target. I'm just gonna have this be in line. So with this, I have a target for the messages URI. Now, what do we need to do here? We need to get messages for year. And uh, the format for the URL is slash messages, question mark, year equals, and the year, right? So we have the target for messages already. So what we need is to add a query param. So I'm gonna use this query param method. And this is how you do query parameters in your JAXRS client, right? So the query param method takes in two arguments. One is the name of the query param and the second is the value. So I add that here so that the query param gets added to the request that I'm making. Now I can add more stuff to this request, right? I can do a dot request and I can pass in the media type. Now I need the media type, application JSON. And uh, once I'm ready with my request, what I would have typically done is I would have done a dot get because if this is a get request, I do a dot get in order to send that request. But here's the thing. I don't want to make this get request here. The idea of this whole prepare request method is so that I prepare the request and hand back the request in a ready status, right? I don't want to make that REST API call here. I just want to prepare the request. 
So what I do is instead of doing a get, I use this other method, which is called build get. And you see here it returns invocation. So I'm gonna choose that. And when I do a build get, I get the invocation object, which is the request that's ready to go, right? You see here, there are a bunch of other signatures for different other methods. So now I just return the invocation and I change the method to return an invocation type. Now in my main method, I can get hold of this invocation object. Again, an invocation object is basically the same as the request that we've seen so far, but we are just short of making the actual request, okay? Now I assign this to a new local variable and um, I'm gonna call this invocation. Now this invocation object is now ready to ready to execute, right? It's ready to invoke. Now I do this by doing an invocation dot, and you see here there's a method called invoke and uh, it returns a response object, which is what we want, right? So this is the step which does the actual HTTP request, right? So when I do an invocation.invoke, it issues the REST API call, whatever the REST API call is that was prepared earlier, and it's gonna return the response that you need. Now I'm gonna just print, call this response, and uh, print it here. I'll just print the status so that we make sure we get a 200 at least. So if I execute this, well, there you go. We get the status 200. So it's exactly the same as what we've learned so far by making a get request. It's just that we are doing it in two steps. One step to build the request and the second step to execute it. This is very handy when you have services or some utility methods which prepare requests and hand them over to the actual method which needs to make them. This is just another handy tool in your toolbox when dealing with REST API clients.